Hello, this is the paper presentation assignment for the Advanced Networks class offered at the University of New Mexico EC540. The paper we chose to present is called Crowdsourcing Access Network Spectrum Allocation Using Smartphones. Uh, our title of our presentation is called Pocket Sniffer and we'll find out why. Let's first introduce the problem. We live in the era of wireless communication systems which means we have smartphones, laptops, tablets, and any other device that connects to the internet. Households and enterprises networks have several devices and use one or many APs. AP stands for access points and we'll keep referring them to them as APs. Examples of household networks can be your home itself and cafes. The home typically has about 10 devices in one AP. Cafes typically have 20 devices with one AP. Enterprises networks include colleges, businesses, which include hundreds of devices with many APs. So why is this a problem? The problem is that if a lot of devices connect to the same AP or use the same wireless channel, this could lead to problems such as congested channels, which means too many people are using the same wireless channel and could deteriorate the bandwidth. Another problem is weak signals, which means the AP is too weak for the end host, meaning that the device is at the very edge of the wireless signal. So what is the solution? The solution is a smartphone network application called Pocket Sniffer. So what is Pocket Sniffer? Pocket Sniffer is a smart phone application that delivers wireless measurements to network administrators for monitoring and debugging purposes. In less technical terms, your smartphone collects nearby network measurements to provide you with a better internet connection. Also, Pocket Sniffer uses crowdsourcing access network spectrum allocation using smartphones. We'll call this Kansas Coordination Algorithms. So how was Pocket Sniffer designed in mind? Pocket Sniffer's motto is that smartphones are always on but mostly idle. So let's take a look at an Alice and Bob example. Here we have SpongeBob and we have Alice in Wonderland. They both have wireless devices that connect to the same AP. In this example, SpongeBob has a smartphone while Alice has both a tablet and a smartphone. Alice keeps her smartphone in her pocket and we'll refer it as an active iPhone because she's not going to be using it. So let's say they're both sitting at a cafe and they both have Pocket Sniffer installed on their devices. Another thing to consider is that they can both be connected to the same AP or they can be connected to different APs. Okay then, so they both start interacting with the internet, Spongebob with the smartphone while Alice with their tablet. While Spongebob continues to interact with the internet on his smartphone, his wireless connection stays excellent. But for a weird reason, Alice's wireless connection becomes weak. And here's where Pocket Sniffer comes into play. During the inactive or idle period of Alice's smartphone, her device running pocket sniffer had been scanning the area and collected measurements from the AP or APs around and also from SpongeBob's smartphone and Alice's tablet. So then pocket sniffer will notice that Alice's tablet has a weak wireless signal. From here pocket sniffer can help Alice in certain ways depending on the measurements it collected. For this example these measurements collected from SpongeBob's active smartphone will tell pocket sniffer that the channel Alice's tablet is using has a lot of traffic or is congested because it noticed that SpongeBob's wireless connection is good but he is using a different channel than Alice's. With this information and depending on pocket sniffer settings it will suggest or automatically change the channel on Alice's tablet or it can also suggest another AP if it's available. 
So how does Pocket Sniffer perform measurements? It does it two ways. The first one is measurement type. Pocket Sniffer performs inexpensive scans to collect and provide a high level view of the network including visible light, APs, and their signal strengths. Pocket Sniffer annotates each scan with two pieces of information, whether the scan was performed during interactive use and the typed stam since the device's data is, data is transfer. This means that Pocket Sniffer will only collect data or measurements from devices that are active in the sense that someone is using the device to send or receive data through the internet. It will not collect data from inactive devices. On the admin side of the app, it can perform query type measurements. Pocket Sniffer queries allows administrators to configure both asynchronous and synchronous data collection by restricting the type of data collected from devices participating, this means the clients, the Pocket Sniffer clients, APs, or active devices to observe, and times during which to make measurements. What do we mean about asynchronous and synchronous queries? Okay. Pocket Sniffer uses both synchronous and asynchronous queries. Asynchronous are queries that are configured by the network administrators, long running and satisfied through delay tolerant upload. It limits the energy overhead of the measurement process and avoids disturbing sessions by waiting to perform asynchronous data collection. This means that just like we can have pocket sniffer clients, which are the people's devices, we can also have pocket sniffer servers. This would be APs with pocket sniffer installed on them. And you can query that server to use that information to survey your network. And then we have synchronous queries, which are initiated on demand by APs, short-lived and satisfied immediately by the participating clients. Pocket Sniffer clients can decide whether they should collect and return requested measurements, a decision determined by the following factors. These factors are proximity to active clients. Pocket Sniffer clients must determine whether they can provide measurements, approximating the network conditions experienced by the active clients included in the query. Battery level. Pocket Sniffer runs on energy constrained devices clients are free to not participate if they are low on energy. Usage status. The goal of Pocket Sniffer is to avoid disturbing active, active sessions. Active clients will ignore synchronous queries. Relationship between devices. Pocket Sniffer allows users to configure their app to always return data about other devices that they own. Okay, let's talk about a Pocket Sniffer ex experiment and its results. But first, let me introduce you to Rogue Access Points. These are unauthorized independent APs within enterprises or colleges, wireless networks, or simply large wireless networks. For example, for UNM's wireless network, the APs are Lobo Wi-Fi, Lobo Guess, and Lobo Secure. But if you scan the area, you can see that there are other APs not affiliated to UNM. These are what we call rogue access points, and I will refer to them as RAPs. Some of these public APs can have security concerns and tend to be congested. Some are private APs and are used exclusively by a group of people within a room, office, or department. Some are private APs. Some are private APs exclusively used by one person alone. The experiment and results were developed by the researchers mentioned on the paper. What they did was to gather wrapped data using six um, pocket sniffer devices. Three of them which were statically placed in certain areas of their campus and three that were mobile by being carried by the researchers and they walked around campus to measure network data. 
The pocket sniffer devices detected 56 wraps. For each wrap, the total traffic volume was calculated. Figure 1 on the right, you can see that it shows the first 15 wraps with the most traffic. This information is useful because it can be given to ne the network administrators and thus use this information to evaluate whether a new whether to deploy a new AP in that certain location where AP1 was located would, would seem logical to add another campus AP that belongs to them that belongs to their campus so that way students don't have to be using this rogue access point and what if that access point is this has a security concern so you want your students to be using a secure AP in this case the campus AP another experiment was channel assignments what the researchers did was to set up a no to no connection on channel 11 and measure the bandwidth on this connection then they proceeded to add another node and began transmitting more UDP packets through this channel in order to jam it. In the figure on the right, we can see that around 8.5 seconds, at time 8.5 seconds, the bandwidth starts to degrade. That's when the channel is congested. And so then at about time 72 seconds, Pocket Sniffer changes the channel to a different channel or to channel 1 in this case and we can see an improvement in bandwidth once again these are some of the pocket sniffer challenges proximity detection energy efficient physical proximity detection is an open research problem and it may disturb network performance for the clients involved measurement availability and energy consumption many smartphones Wi-Fi chipsets do not allow detailed measurements either due to hardware, firmware, or driver limitations. Need to create special hardware systems or embed it into existing hardware to make it to make better network measurements. Let's continue. Another challenge is incentivize data collection. For Pocket Sniffer to work as efficiently as possible, there has to be a lot of clients we can incentivize by having employers or colleges or networks, large networks uh, require whoever is going to use their their connection to to install pocket sniffer as part of their term and condition in order to use their Wi-Fi connection so then that the network administrators can then analyze this data and improve their network Another challenge is validating measurements. Some of these clients, if they mess around with the app, they can falsify measurement data. This can have a selfish approach and try and steal all the bandwidth for themselves. One solution can be to realize a reputation mechanism to identify selfish clients. In conclusion, Pocket Sniffer is still in the development stage and there are many questions that we came across when we thought about the development stage mainly questions about energy hardware and security let's start with energy as a client point of view battery life is very important for smartphones from personal experience i tend to turn off apps and try to conserve as much battery as, as possible when my power is low pocket sniffer runs while it's charging or inactive. While well, charging is not an issue, but not everyone not everyone carries their charger everywhere. And when it's inactive, it still means I mean it means that pocket sniffer is still running and thus it must consume some sort of power. The paper doesn't mention how much how energy efficient the app is, but this would have to be a crucial requirement for this app to be for it to be successful secondly for the hardware part the paper mentions that not all smartphones can support the app due to 
the special art, specialized hardware limitations. Indeed, in the first experiment, the one shown in the previous slides, the researchers actually used special, specialized pocket sniffers clients to get the rogue access point information. Um, our question is if you know they should try and deploy pocket sniffer as a hardware and software system instead of just the app. Maybe as a static hardware system like a pole antenna around campus or the work area or develop and design their own hardware or I mean simply a detachable plug-in that connects to their phone or or Bluetooth these are just some of the thoughts we came across as part of a solution to this hardware challenge finally the most important is security um, can pocket sniffer in some ways be hacked that's one question we came across the paper mentions that malicious users can falsify falsify data for pocket sniffer server and they can exploit the network's bandwidth and give this user the best bandwidth quality the paper talks about hoping that the users can just be honest they can just assume that they're all going to be honest but in, in our point of view uh, it only takes one user to mess things up they do mention a reputation system where they would check if the user are being good clients or not with that being said another question we come across is with dealing with falsifying information they could trick the clients to get suggestions about changing their AP to a malicious wrap or rogue access point and that way whoever set up this access point can can collect personal information um, people will not be happy and probably would want to uninstall this app then arises their other challenge that they talked about where in which they need as many clients as possible to make this this app to inter interact better or, or be more efficient that way so those were our questions for our conclusion and this is the final slide for our presentation here's the reference for our paper um, if you'd like to read it but hopefully you know now what pocket sniffer is all about so give us a thumbs up or comment below bye